This video is going to cover the second part to 9-2, and that's where we're going to take the axis of symmetry in the vertex, and we're going to use them to make a sketch of what the graph is supposed to look like. So this is a little more advanced than the part one video, but it is going to use a lot of the same ideas and just expand upon them. So what we are basically doing is we're going to calculate the vertex and the axis of symmetry, and we're going to use them to make a basic drawing of what our graph should look like. So here's our quadratic function, x squared plus 6x minus 2. Pretty easy one to work with. Let's just go through the formulas for the axis of symmetry in the vertex. First, to get the axis of symmetry, you would use the formula negative b over 2a. You would plug in 6 for b, so you would get negative 6 in the numerator. And you would plug in 1 for a, so that would be 2 times 1, which is 2. Negative 6 divided by 2, that is negative 3. So our axis of symmetry is going to be at x equals negative 3. And remember, the axis of symmetry is going to represent a line, a line that is going through the x-axis, which is why it has an equation, x equals, and then whatever the number is, in this case, negative 3. So now that we have the axis of symmetry, we can go ahead and calculate the vertex. And since the axis of symmetry and the vertex have the same x-coordinate, again, just to draw a little sketch of that, let's say our parabola looks like this. The vertex would be right here at the top. Ooh, that's a horrible dot. There we go. The axis of symmetry will pass through the vertex, meaning they have the exact same x-coordinate. They have to. That's just part of uh, the, the rule of what, of what it means to have the axis of symmetry in the vertex. So since the axis of symmetry was negative 3, we go ahead and plug it in for x. So it says x squared, so we will do negative 3 squared. It says 6 times x, so we have 6 times negative 3, and then just subtract 2 from that result. So you would get positive 9 minus 18 minus 2, and then 9 minus 18 is negative 9, minus 2 is negative 11. So you've now calculated your y value, which is negative 11, meaning your vertex is at the coordinate negative 3, negative 11. So let's draw a sketch of what we have so far, and then we can take it to the next level after we get the axis of symmetry and vertex drawn. Since the vertex is at negative 3, uh, negative 11, let's just go ahead and mark up the graph for a second. And all right, so uh, the dotted line represents the axis of symmetry, which is passing through the coordinate plane of negative 3. You can see it right there. The axis of symmetry is going through negative 3. And our vertex is at negative 3, negative 11. So I went over to negative 3 and then down to negative 11 and then drew a dot representing the vertex. It's an important thing to note that we can tell right now that the parabola is going to go like this where it's opening upwards. Do you know why we know that? Hopefully you recognize it's because the x squared term has a positive 1 in front of it. And because 1 is greater than 0, the parabola is going to open upwards. In any case, uh, now that we have the axis of symmetry and the vertex drawn, we can go ahead and do something else to make this process go a little smoother. And here's what that is. Find the y-intercept. And the reason why we're going to find the y-intercept is because it's really easy to do. Remember, every single y-intercept forever is going to have an x value of 0. You just have to plug in 0 to calculate what the y-intercept is supposed to be. Just because we don't have straight lines anymore doesn't mean our graphs still don't have y-intercepts. So when you plug in 0 for x, you get x squared, or 0 squared plus 6 times 0 minus 2. So anything times 0 is 0, so both the, uh, those two terms will go away, leaving you with just the negative 2. So your y-intercept is at 0, negative 2, which we can go ahead and plot right here. Now here's a really big idea. We just found a point that is to the right of the axis of symmetry. The key word there being symmetry, meaning the parabola is symmetrical. If we just calculated a point that is three units to the right of the axis of symmetry, well, without doing any work, you can go ahead and plot another point three units to the left. And that's because, again, it is called the axis of symmetry, and a parabola is symmetrical. 
So once you find a coordinate point on one side, you can just reflect it to the other side. And now we have a very basic sketch of what our parabola should look like. And that is how you can use the axis of symmetry in the vertex to draw a rough sketch of your parabola. You just want to make sure you find the y-intercept so you can get a point that can then be reflected to get another point. The graph doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be close enough.